thing about this is, yeah, it's got loads of little tubes in which you can put your seed beads in. You can. Hello, everyone. Hope you've been enjoying your advent calendar make so far. I was lucky enough to be given number six. So let's have a look and see what number six is. So if we open the calendar and we take out number six, there we go. So it's very exciting, isn't it? And I know what it is and I was so excited when I received this. Isn't that beautiful? It's a hand carved jade high goo donut. It's double sided. It's beautiful. It's about 30 millimeters in diameter. So you can see it is quite 3D, the carving on it on both sides as well. All right. It's got a little hole in the middle. And it's quite thick as well, actually, if you look at the profile. So it's quite substantial. So what have I decided to make with this? Well, what I was thinking was I didn't want to hide any of the design on the front. So I wanted to come up with a design that didn't cover any of the front of the pendant. And I also kind of wanted to go with the sort of the oriental theme of it because obviously um, in the Far East is where jade is the most uh, sort of appreciated, I suppose. Um, and so I, I sort of went with that sort of a design. So um, I will go through quickly the things that we need. So this is the design basically. I, I, I'm not going to show you how to do the rope. We're just going to concentrate on the pendant section, which you can obviously then hang on any sort of a necklace rope. You can hang it on a beaded rope. You can hang it on a leather cord. You can hang it on a chain. Uh, and if you look, I can show you underneath. So there's a little bit of green in between. Okay, so you can see, uh, so that kind of goes along with the color of the jade. And if I turn it over, then you can see how I've attached it on the back. So I'm going to show you how to make the frame and how to fit it, fit the, the, the donut into the frame. And then also how to do the bottom and the top decorative pieces there to make that pendant section. And then you can choose whatever sort of a necklace chain or design you want to incorporate that into. Okay. So I'm going to show you, first of all, what you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need your, your uh, jade from your box number six, which also comes in a beautiful little organza bag, which is lovely. Okay. Then for your thread, you're going to need some quite substantial fire line because um, you do want it to be quite sort of solid. You don't want it to be flimsy and floppy because it needs to hold its shape around your pendant. So ideally a 10 pound fire line or a wildfire. If you don't have 10 pound, uh, eight pounds should still be okay. So that would be, that would be okay. Um, I'm gonna use black in my demo for, for the actual make. I used uh, a crystal because that kind of disappears into the gold beads a bit better, but you can see the black better as I'm working with it. So I'm going to use the black here in my demo. Then you're gonna need a beading needle, which is, um, a size 10 would be perfect. Uh, a size 12 would work as well, but obviously a size 10 is slightly bigger, so it's easier to thread. And although we will be using size 15 beads, uh, we're not going to go through them an awful lot of times. So a size 10 beading needle will work just fine, okay? Then as far as your beads go, you're going to need some size 11.0 silver line gold seed beads, okay? You're going to need some in the same color. They don't have to be silver line gold. You can use whatever color you want. But what you're going to need is size 11 O seed beads, size 15 O seed beads. Sorry, these are the delica. So delica beads, 11 O, and then 15 O beads. So all three of these in the same color, ideally. They don't absolutely have to be. Um, if I bring the pendant over, I can show you where I used each one. So if you want to use different colors. So the 11 O beads are going to be used in the frame but I'm also going to use the 15 O's in the frame, uh, just along the outside edge. So if you use a different color 15 O, you're gonna have a slight um, sort of an edging around the edge, which might also look nice as well. And then the delicas are the ones that I've used in this section here and here. And I've used the size 15s again on the end. So you can decide if you want them all to be the same color or if you want to different colors. I use different colors and then I just used a few green size 11 round seed beads again for the end of the decorations and to join them all together 
in these sections here. And then I went ahead and used that to make a rope at the top to suspend my pendant from, which again, you can make that gold, you can make that whatever color you wanted to do there as well. Okay, the other thing you're going to need is one three millimeter sterling silver, ideally gold plated sterling silver um, uh, metal bead. Now for, for this, obviously I use the gold because I use the gold seed beads, but you can use uh, silver if you wanted to. You can use silver for your frame as well. So whatever color matches your the rest of your beads will be fine. Also, it doesn't have to be a sterling silver metal bead. You can use a small gemstone. You can use a size 8 or a size 6 seed bead as well. The only thing you need to make sure of is that it's got quite a large hole. So um, two or three millimeter micro faceted gemstones don't usually have a hole that's big enough because you're going to be going through the hole um, several times, uh, six to eight times. So you want to have a bead there that's got uh, a pretty big hole in the center. Okay. And then the other thing you're going to need is these are size 60 beads that I've got here. Now these are some, I just call them cheapy beads because they don't need to be Mayuki, they can be whatever. Sometimes we get um, little glass spacer beads in between our gemstones on the gemstone strands. You can use those, whatever you have, because these are gonna go inside of these little uh, sections here. So you're not going to see them at all. Uh, so it doesn't matter if they're not uniform, as long as they're sort of around the size of a 60 bead, okay? So whatever beads you have that you don't like, you can put those in there. If you have, if you don't have six O's, you can use a four millimeter bead should fit or a three millimeter or anything like that. You can use uh, for that. Something that you want to hide away and don't want to use for anything nice. Okay. And then other than that, you just need a pair of scissors. And if you have a thread zapper, then that would be great as well. Right. So what we're gonna start with, we're gonna start with making this frame here. Now I've called this a spinner pendant. As you can see, it spins around this way. Okay, it doesn't spin around that way because you've got the backing on there. Okay, but it does spin around this way. So it's not glued in. It's not actually attached anywhere else other than that little center bead, which is holding it in place there. Okay, so we're going to start by making this frame. Okay, I'm going to put that aside for now. Okay, right now. To make that section, I'm going to, I'm not going to use these beads because they're all the same color and they're all very small, so it'll be very difficult for you to see. So what I am going to use, I'm going to use some larger 8 beads in these opaque colors because those will be much easier to see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to start off with those. So what we're going to do, I've, I've threaded a piece of thread into my, into my needle. Now you're going to need quite a lot of thread for this section, so if you can use two meters of thread, that's great which is about six or seven feet, so two double arm lengths. If you can't use that much thread, you can join in, uh, but I prefer not joining if I don't have to. So I use as big a piece of thread as I can work with. Obviously here for, for this demo, I've just used a short piece, uh, but that's how much you would need to make the entire section. So this is what we're going for at the moment. I'm just going to be using the different colors for now. So let me just get some of these out. So these are my 8 beads. It's the same technique that I would do. So I would be using my 11 main color beads here if I was making it for the actual pendant. So take your thread. Now I'm going to start off by just picking up four of my beads. Okay. Now in the design you would use all the same color, but I'm going to use two colors here because it will help me to explain to you how to do the stitching. So for the, for the beginning here, just ignore the fact that I'm using two colors. Okay, so tie a double knot there so that that's secure. So, so far I've just got my four little beads in a circle like that. Then I'm going to go through one of the beads next to my knot, just so that my thread isn't coming out of the actual knot. Okay, now what you need to do essentially is you need to bead a little flower around each of those beads. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up three beads. As I say, just ignore the fact that I'm using two different colors here. And then this bead that I'm coming out of now, let me move these up the background so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. Okay, so I'm going to come around in a circle and I'm going to go through that bead in the same direction again. So you can see I've made a little flower next to that one. Then I'm going to move on to the next bead in my original four. So I'm going to go through that. I can turn my work this way. 
like that. And I'm going to do the same thing again, okay? But this time, I'm only going to pick up this side bead. So I'm going to pick up a green. I'm going to pick up a white, which is the second bead in my little flower. And for the third one, so here I've picked up three beads, but here I'm just picking up those two on that side. And this one, I'm going to share as my third bead. So now I'm going to take those two beads that I've picked up, then I'm going to go through this turquoise one here on the side, and then through that one that I was originally coming out of. Okay, so I've got another flower here, but the sides are starting to turn up now because I'm sharing this one bead in between. Then I'm going to turn my flower again and I'm going to go into the next side bead. Okay, and I'm going to do the same again. So the sides are going to start to want to turn upwards, so just let them if they do. Again, I'm going to pick up two beads. And again, I'm going to share. So I'm covering up these first beads there, just so that it's not confusing. So those are my original four. And then this is the last three that I added. Well, two I added and the third one I shared. Now I pick up another two. And then again, I'm sharing this last turquoise one. And then go through the one I'm coming out of again. Okay? Now you don't need to pull it all tight at the moment because it, it will look a little bit of a mess. Don't worry about it. So now I'm going to go through the fourth bead in my base four beads. Okay? So now you can see when these sides start turning up, I've got a turquoise bead on both sides now. Okay? So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by going through the turquoise bead on that top side. Then I'm just going to pick up one bead. Then I'm going to go through this turquoise one, which I added in my last step. And then I'm going to go through that base white bead again, just like I've been doing on the other sides. So now when you pull it tight, what happens is all of these sides, they stand up. Okay, so you've got four beads again at the top, which have come together from the side flowers. And if you look on the sides, you can see that the middle beads are all turquoise in this case. Obviously, yours will all be one color if you're making it for the pendant. But this will help me to explain a little bit better. So it's kind of like we've got the same four beads again that we had started with at the bottom, okay? But we're sort of one level higher. So if you think of this as a box with um, sort of lids and, and or a, a box with a top, let's say a ceiling and a floor and then walls, then you've got, this is your ceiling, this is the last four beads that have come together, those four white ones. And then at the bottom, we had the floor that we started with the four at the bottom. And then in between, you've got these wall beads. Now you'll see that the wall beads, which in this case are the turquoise ones, have all got their holes going up this way. Okay? If I'm holding it sideways. The ceiling and the floor have all got their holes going left to right, like that. Okay? And whichever side you look at, they're all the same. So this is a little cube, essentially. Now we've got our new four beads at the top. So what we need to do is we need to do the same thing again, but build another block on top of these four beads at the top, okay? So now currently our thread is coming out of that last white bead in the bottom, in the, in the floor that we finished on. So you want to come up through the turquoise bead or a wall bead, and then you want to go through the next white bead, which is in your ceiling, right? So now we're in exactly the same position as we were in when we started with our first four beads at the bottom. Okay? So now you want to do the same thing. Now don't worry, these four white beads are not joined to each other because remember they turned up from the side. They're not joined together, they're loose. But it doesn't matter because when you do the next step they will, be, they will become joined together. So you're going to do exactly the same thing again. So I'm going to carry on using the turquoise and the white so that you can see the difference. So in my first step, I'm pick, picking up three beads. I'm coming around going through that white bead that I'm coming out of. Then I'm going onto the next floor bead in this case, because my ceiling has now become my floor of my next block. Okay, then I'm picking up two beads. Okay, and then I'm sharing this wall bead from my previous flower. Okay, then I go into the next white bead again. Okay, again I'm picking up two beads. Okay, and I'm sharing this last wall bead again. So you're building your little walls around your floor and your ceiling is being built at the same time. 
Okay, now I'm going through my last floor bead. So because it's the last one, and I can tell it's the last one because I've got three ceiling beads there already. Can you see the white, three whites at the top? Okay, so now I'm going to come up through the wall that's on the first side that I did on this level. I'm just picking up a roof and then I'm going down the wall that I just added on the previous step. And then I'm coming around again, going through the, fl the last floor bead that I've just done. Okay, so you can see now I've got two levels. So I've got two wall sections there and I've got a brand new ceiling at the top again, which is my four white beads again, which is the same again as what we started with at the bottom. Okay, so again, these four are not joined together, but because we go around the whole thing when we build the next floor, they will become joined together. So you can actually see, because I've got black thread, you can see there's a join between those beads there. So they will become joined together. Okay, so that will be your second level. And then again, you're coming out of a white bead, so that's a floor bead. You come up through the wall, and then you go through one of the ceiling beads to get into position to do your next level, okay? So this is how you're going to build your, this little rope. Now this is called cubic right angle weave. Don't worry too much about that. That sounds a bit scary, but if you ever need to do another design that calls for cubic right angle weave, this is pretty much it, okay? I'll just do one more layer just so you can see. So in the first step, you pick up three beads, then you move on to the next bead, then you're gonna pick up two beads, then you share the previous one, you go through the one that you're coming out of, then you move on to the next bead again, two beads again, Let me just make sure you pull it tight, then I'm sharing this bead again. So it's basically four stitches for each level, in the first stitch you pick up three beads, in the second and the third you pick up two beads each time, and then the last one you're just picking up one because you already have both of the walls on either side. Okay, and then you step up to the top round again. So that's another four, another floor done. Okay, so you're just going to carry on like that until you have, I will tell you how many you need to have. So I've done a longer section here, so I'm just going to thread my needle onto that thread need that piece anymore. So you're going to carry on until you have 36 rows. Now I'll quickly show you how to count the rows. I haven't got quite 36 rows here but for the purpose of, of this demo it will be fine. Right so the way you count your rows is you're going to count the floor and the ceiling beads. So you want to count the beads where the holes go across that way, okay? Not the ones where the holes go this way. Right, so count the white, in this case the white beads, but the ones where the holes go across. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Okay, so I've got 22 rows. You need to carry on until you have 36 rows. Okay, so let's just pretend I've got 36 rows here, because now we need to join it together into a circle. So what you want to do is you want to bring the two ends together. Now what you want to watch is that you don't have a twist because it's very easy to join the two ends together with a twist in it and then it's not going to work out as nice. So what you want to do is try to bring it together. Um, so this is the bead that my thread is coming out of here at the top, right? That's one of my ceiling beads. So you want to bring it together with the bead on the other side that corresponds. So you want to follow it along. So you see, this is where my, my thread is coming out of. So you want to follow it along in a straight line. And this one, which happens to have my tail thread coming out of, so it's easy to remember which it is. You might have your tail thread coming out of another one. Doesn't matter. Just make sure that you know which one it is that corresponds to that bead there in the same straight line. And you want to bring those two beads together. Okay, so these come together like so. And then this bead and this bead are in a straight line if you follow it along, okay? So now you want to join together the two ends. So what we need to do is we're gonna pretend that this is our floor, these four beads, and this is our ceiling. So all we need to do now is fill in the walls, okay? So we're gonna pick up a wall bead and then we're gonna make a circle going around this bead here that is closest to it. Because if you imagine, it's gonna come together like that. 
okay? So you want to attach this bead to that one there as if it was a complete wall. So we pick up one wall bead, then we pick up another wall bead on the other side, and we come back through this one here on the right hand side. Okay, so that makes your little flower that brings together the two ends, but obviously we need to join up the other ones as well, okay? So we're going to carry on. I'm going to try and not turn this in any way so that you can follow what I'm doing. I'm going to carry on to the next floor bead. Okay, now that one corresponds to this one here. Now can you see I've already got a wall bead in between? So to complete the circle, I just need to pick up one. Okay, and then I want to carry on that circle. So you want to carry on until you come out of the white bead on that side. So that's made my second little flower there. Okay. Now the next, next one along, that corresponds to this one here. So again, you need to pick up one wall bead and you want to attach it to this one here. Just get your, the tail thread out of the way so it doesn't get all tangled in. Okay. And then you're going to carry on through this one here that you just added the wall bead and you want to carry on until you've joined up all four sides. Now for the last one, you've got all the beads already. So if I turn it slightly, you can kind of see. So I've got the two white beads, which is this one here and this one that need to come together. And I've got my four, my two wall beads already because this one is the one I just added. And this one came from when we joined together the first side. So now all I need to do is just go through those four just to pull them together. So you have your four beads stitched together on this fourth side as well. Okay, so you come around. So now you've joined up the two ends and you can see it's going to be, uh, you're not really going to be able to see where that join is. You can, if, you, if you're coming out in the same spot with your tail thread and your working thread, you can just tie them together in a knot here and then carry on that way. They will secure your working thread and your tail thread. Um, you can work your way around if you wanted to, um, but you don't really have to because your tail thread is secure. So you can just thread that through a few beads and then cut it off, to be honest with you at this point, which I might actually do just to get it out of the way. I'm not going to go through any beads because this is just a demo piece, but at least it's out of the way now. So now, what's the next thing we're going to do? Well, you can see that this rope here is kind of rounded, and I wanted more of a square frame to go around the pendant, okay? So now, very simply, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to first of all, strengthen it because it's quite soft and floppy at the moment. Uh, and second of all, we're going to make it a bit more of a square shape. So as I, as I said before, my wall beads, which are the turquoise beads here, have got their holes going that way. So we're going to stitch through those and we're going to add some beads. So my thread is coming out of a white bead. So I need to turn so that my thread is coming out of a wall bead. So we're going to follow the, the, the rope around. So you need to come out of a bead that has the hole going that way. Okay. Now on the outside, what we're going to do is we're going to add two beads in between each of the wall beads, each of the turquoise beads. And we're going to add, I'm going to use another color actually, I'm going to use some black. Yeah, so let me get some black out. Now, if you were making this using your size 11 beads for your pendant, so far we've been using our size 11 beads. We're going to carry on using, uh, no, actually, sorry, we're going to switch to our size 15 beads. That's why I've got the size 11 here because I need to size down one. So for the outside ring, we're going to add two size 11 beads. Or if you're making the actual size for the pendant, then you need to add two size 15 beads. Okay. So I'm sizing up here just to make it easier to see, but you will use 15 beads in the actual pendant. So I'm picking up two size 11 beads and I'm just going through straight through the very next wall bead, the very next turquoise. And I'm picking up two again and going through those, the next one. So very simply, you go all the way around one edge, going straight through all of the beads that are in a line. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go all the way because I still have a lot to show you. But you just carry on until you get all the way around to the other side. When you've gotten to the end, right, so when you, you keep going, keep going, when you've filled in these last two here, okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Because if you imagine this is the left side of your frame, 
then you need to do the same on the other side. So you're just going to turn around so that you're going through a wall bead that's on the other side of your frame. Okay, and you're going to do the same thing again. So pick up two 11s, or if you're using the smaller beads, then uh, the size 15s. You could actually make the entire frame using larger beads, size 8s and size 11s, like I'm doing here in this demo. You just have to measure uh, the number of rows you need, because obviously you'll need less rows. And what you're going for is for a frame, this almost fits, this, is, this would be a little bit too small, the number of rows that I have there. What you're looking for is a frame that fits around your pendant like that. Okay, so you just need to work out how many rows you want to do. If you want to do it using larger beads, which it will still look lovely. Um, and if you've never done this sort of thing before, then it's probably easier to use the larger beads. Okay, so I'm just carrying on with one size bead lower. So 11, because if, if anybody doesn't know, the 11 O beads are smaller than the 8 O's and the 15 O's. So the higher the number, the smaller the bead. Okay, so can you see that's made my frame a lot more sort of square looking and a bit more rigid as well. Okay, now we need to do the same thing on the inside, but obviously we need to add less to the inside because you want it to curve. Okay, so the inner beads are closer together than the outer beads. So now you're going to come through to the inside once you've gone all the way around with that until you're coming out of one of your wall beads on the inside. Okay, now here we're just going to add one in this case, 8 o bead. So one 8 o bead is slightly smaller than two 11 o's. Okay, if you're using the smaller sizes, then one 11 o bead is slightly smaller than your two 15 o's on the outside. So on the inside, you would just use the same beads that you've been using for the rest of the frame. I'm just using a different color here so you can see again the, uh, um, the difference of the beads. So again, you're just going through all the turquoise beads or all the wall beads that have their holes in this direction. It's quite easy to tell which bead to go through because these are the only beads that have their holes going in the right direction because you'll see the white beads have got the holes that way. So you just keep going through the ones that are facing in the right direction. Okay, so once you've gone all the way around again, then you need to do the same thing on the other side, okay? So that'll be your fourth um, corner, really, because now it's going to be uh, more of a square shape. So you're going to go through underneath one of the one of the uh, wall, uh, one of the ceiling beads, and then go through one of your wall beads, right? So that's the side I've done already. This is on the other side now, and I'm doing the same thing again, adding my atos in between these ones. So you will see. When you've done all four of those corners essentially for your frame, then you'll have um, quite a rigid structure. I mean, this won't be as rigid because I haven't gone all the way around, first of all. Um, second of all, the larger beads tend to be a little bit, oh, I've gone through an extra one there. Let's just go back. Okay, so it's not quite as rigid with the slightly larger beads, but it will still work if you want to use larger beads for your pendant. Okay, so you'll see I've now done all four sides in this section at least, because obviously I haven't gone all the way around. So now it becomes much more rigid, it holds its shape better, and it curves nicely, and it's a bit more of a square structure. Okay, so I've made this piece ahead, which is exactly what I've just explained so far. Okay, because now I'm going to show you how to set your pendant into there. Um, okay, which I think is kind of the important part because obviously this is um, how you're going to set your, your number six item. The rest of it re is really just decoration around it. Right, so what we've got now, I'm going to refer back to this occasionally, so I'm actually going to leave that there. So now what you want to do is, if you look at the inside of your new frame, can you see the white beads in the middle? Okay, that's what we're going to attach our donut to. Okay, so your white beads on the inside are the ones where the holes go that way, they go across. Okay, 
So if you've never done this before, it probably would be a good idea to make one like this in, in the different colors as I've done here until you get the technique down. And then you'll be able to see the different beads even if you've used the same color all the way through. Okay, so these are the beads that we're looking for. And what we want to do, I'm just going to bring the necklace over again. Okay, so what we're aiming to do is to take one bead, oh, I've actually put a bead on the back as well, which is optional, you can, you don't have to, but um, let me just get my two little sterling silver beads out. So you're gonna need two of the sterling silver beads then. Okay, so what we want to do is you want to pick up, um, I just need to also get out my proper size beads quickly because I've now switched to the actual size that I'm using for the pendant. So let me just get all of these out of the way quickly. Okay. Sorry, just getting these out of the way because it's just going to be confusing if I have these here. Okay, and these ones I'll just push out of the way. Right, so now we need the actual, so these are my 11 O's. These are my 15 O's. So as you can see, I've got silver line gold in all of them. And then I've got the delicas as well, which I won't put out just yet. So what I'm gonna do now is, first of all, I'm gonna pick up 15 let me just check my cheat sheet quickly. <laughs> um, sorry, 12, not 15, 12 pieces. 12 of my size 15 beads. There's a lot of numbers to remember, so I had to write a cheat sheet. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I've picked up 12 of my size 15 beads. Actually, before I do that, what you want to make sure, because my thread is now coming out of the wrong place here, so not quite yet. So my thread in this piece, because of where I stopped adding all my other beads, is coming out of one of the outer beads. So what you need to do is you want to make your way until it's coming out of one of those white beads that I talked about on the inside. Okay, so wherever you're, you finished off adding your corner beads, just follow an existing thread path until, which might not be the same as where my thread is at the moment. So don't worry about where my thread is coming out of. Just look at where your thread is coming out of at the moment and just go through the existing, so those wall and the ceiling beads that you had previously, just go through them until your thread is coming out of one of those inside. So you kind of need to work on the inside of your ring at this point. So can you see now my, th my needle is going through a bead where the hole is horizontal like that. Right, then, now you can turn your pendant uh, frame either way around because you're coming out of a bead that's in the middle. So don't worry which is the front and which is the back. Now you're going to pick up your 12 size 15 beads. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Okay, bring those down. Now you're going to go through your pendant in the middle. Okay, don't pull it too tight because your 15 O's will come through the center. Then you're going to pick up your gold plated sterling silver bead. Okay, then you're going to go back down through the pendant. Okay, then at this point you can pull it tight. Oh, I've got my other threads in the way here. Okay, so you pull it tight and this is going to pull you might need to help it a little bit. Just You just want to make sure that you don't pull your size 15 beads through. Now, why is it not going? You don't want to pull your size 15 beads through the hole in the center. So just take your time with this. Okay, you can have a look on the back. You want to keep going until all your 15 beads are sitting nicely in a row. This is the probably the fiddliest bit of the entire design. Okay, now I've got one that's come through the middle, so just chase it back down again. Okay, and then pull your thread until it's kind of pulled tight. There you go, see like that. 
Okay, now my thread is under my frame, so I'm just going to bring it through. Okay, now you want to do the same thing again. So you want to pick up 12 more of your size 15 beads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, and then you don't have to be too precise about it. I mean, I, I did sort of work out how many beads to to move along until I was directly opposite. But remember, this is the back, so if it's not 100% perfect, it doesn't matter. So just sort of guesstimate, I guess, which is the, the bead that is opposite. And then remember, you're looking for that inside bead with the, with the hole that goes across, so that way. Okay, so you wanna go through that. So this will give your second sort of arm of your little backing section here, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna move along Okay, so come over to the front. You, are, you should be at the front now because you've come through your, your work that way. And then what you want to do is you want to move along your side beads until you get to... Um, so the way I did it was I did these two first and then I did those two and then I did another two in between. So basically you just move along your, your, your side beads they might get a little tight here, depending on how tight your beading is. So just, um, just do a little bit at a time. Yeah, if you're doing this at home, obviously you're going to take your time with this and you, um, you will have your time to you take as long as you need. So you can watch this back any time. You can watch it on YouTube. Um, so you can take as long as you need. Anyway, let's, let's say I've gotten to sort of a quarter of the way along. Then you're going to do the same thing again. Actually, I, didn't, I came through there. So you want to go through one of those horizontal beads again. Only because, I mean, you could attach your pendant really to any of the beads on the side. The only reason that I went for these horizontal beads is because those are the ones that are the center of my frame. If you're looking at it side on, if you imagine, so I've got my frame here. So these ones are the middle of my frame and the same on the inside as well. So those white ones are the middle. So I wanted my, my pendant to sit directly in the center if you're looking at it on a profile like that. So I didn't want it to stick out forwards or backwards. So when you've moved along to sort of here, then you're gonna do the same again. So you pick up your, your 12. I'm just gonna pick up a few so I can move on to the next section. Um, no, I'm not picking up any. <laughs> Let's say I've got my 12 there, then you're going to do the same again. Now it does get a bit fiddly again because you, it's, it's harder to go through the hole in your bead, but you can just go next to it, you can go through, obviously you'd have your 12 beads on there. So you can go through to the other side, then you can find the hole. So this is why you need quite a large hole in your, in your little center bead because you're going to go through it a good number of times. Okay, And then you can go through the bot to the bottom again and do sort of the next arm of your backing, okay? And then you can add another, another gold bead onto the back if you want the, the back to look a little bit pretty as well afterwards. Okay, so that's basically how you're going to set your pendant into your frame, okay? So now we'll quickly show you how to do the other bits. So what it did was, as I said, I wanted to go with sort of the oriental th theme, so I kind of um, wanted it to look a bit like a temple. So I've made these sections here, which you can also use as earrings, by the way. So you can, you can do that to make matching earrings. And then I was playing around with the design and then that's what I came up with to, to have two at the bottom, two at the top. I haven't got the last one finished because that's going to be what I'm showing you. And sort of that sort of look. Okay. So this, these, bits, these bits are really simple because all you need is a little section of peyote stitch. Okay. Um, now I'm going to find my needle and I will quickly show you in case somebody hasn't done any peyote stitch yet. So this is where you're going to need your delicas. Now you can do this if you don't have delicas, you can do this with the, um, with the round 11 O's as well. It'll have a slightly different look, but it ha it'll have the same sort of effect. Okay. So to get started, you're going to need a stopper bead. Uh, do I have a different color bead? Um, you want to use a different color bead for your stopper bead. Uh, which, where am I? 
Oh, I can use a black one. There we go. Um, because you don't want to accidentally work it into your design. So just put on a bead onto the end of a piece of thread. Um, for these, you don't need very much thread, probably a couple of feet for each one. Okay? And then you're going to pick up. Now, for these sections, you see I've got, um, I will have two short ones and two long ones. For the long ones, you start by picking up 20 beads. For the short ones, you're going to start by picking up 12 beads. Okay? So I'm just going to pick up 12 beads here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve beads. Okay? Bring them down to your stopper thread, so to your stopper bead. Then you're going to pick up one bead. Okay? And then you're going to skip over this very last bead here out of the first 12 that you picked up and then you're going to go back through the second one just that one okay like that so when you pull it tight you're going to have two beads at the end sitting next to each other like a little T shape at the bottom I hope you can see that okay then you're going to pick up another bead and then you're going to jump over the very next bead and you're going to go into the one after that Okay, so when you pull them tight, you've now sort of got two little T's sitting there, and you're, you're starting to make a shape that's kind of like a little um, zigzag, I suppose you could say. So you've got beads sticking out, and you've got beads, so you've got two beads next to each other, then one bead, and then two next to each other, then one bead, then two next to each other. And you're going to carry on like that, so each time you pick up one bead, you skip over the next one, and then you go through the one after that. Okay, you're going to carry on like that until you get to the end of your row. You should, with your last bead that you add, you should go out through the very last gold bead. So don't forget, don't go through your stopper bead. Just go through the very last gold bead. So that's your peyote stitch started there. Okay, then you're going to turn it over and you're going to do the same thing coming back again. So you're going to pick up one bead. And now you'll see you've got, well, you've got two beads next to each other, right? You've got a bead sticking out to the right. Then you've got a single bead. Then you've got two beads next to each other again. So you've got a bead sticking out to the right. So you're going to go through the first bead that sticks out to the right after you've picked up one bead. Then you're going to pick up one bead again. Then you're going to go through the next bead that sticks out to the right. And then you're going to pick up one bead. So that's basically your peyote stitch. Okay, it's really simple. And you're going to carry on like that. Okay, until you have what I have here, which is 20 rows. Now, how do you count your rows in peyote stitch when uh, the beads kind of look like they're kind of higgledy piggledy? Well, um, so this is the way that I was working. So here I've got my beads sticking out and my beads sticking in. Okay, so you want your starting thread, your tail thread, at one corner and diagonally opposite, you want your Finish your working thread, right? And then you need to have 10 beads on that top edge and 10 beads at the bottom edge. That will give that means you've got 20 rows. So you want to count across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and ten on the bottom as well, which means you've got 20 rows. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to join this together to make a little tube like that. But before we do that, we want to put on some of this embellishment here on the ends. Okay? So for that, we're just going to pick up um, five of our size 15 beads okay then the bead that I'm coming out of I'm gonna go in through the next bead along now this is on the straight side it's not on the side where I've got the sticky out beads this is on the on the edge where the beads are straight so I'm going down the next bead okay so now I've put my little five beads at the top and then I'm coming out again of the very next bead okay then I'm picking up five of my size 15 beads again. And I'm going down the next bead along. Okay, you're going to do this all the way along. So you should have five of these little um, uh, picots, I suppose you would call them, on the edge. Okay. So again, you go down the very next bead 
and then you come up the next bead after that. So I've got three there. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then one more after that. Come up there and add my last five. So this sort of takes care of the embellishment on one end. You can do it at the end if you wanted to stitch it up first, but um, then you've got to weave your way through the whole entire thing to come back to the side. So it's just easier if you do it this way. So now I'm coming out of one of the delicas um, on this side. So now I want to fold it in half with your little embellishments all on this side. So make sure you don't fold it that way. You can't actually fold it that way because peyote stitch doesn't fold that way. So you can only fold it this way. So if you have a look, if you ignore the five 15 beads on the end and you just look at the original peyote stitching that I did, right? The very top one is sticking out, okay? When, this is on the other side where my thread isn't coming out. Where my thread is coming out, I'm coming out um, actually, it's the second one that's sticking out on the other end. So my thread is coming out of the very top one. And on the other side, the very next one that is sticking out is the second one. So it, the, it's the first one sticking out. So it's kind of hard to explain. But if you ignore the 15 O's, can you see the first one that's sticking out there at the top? So that first one that's sticking out is the one you now want to go through. So you go through with your thread through that top bead. Okay, which is going to bring the two sides together. Okay, now if you can see, so you've got your little zigzags with your out beads and your in beads on this side, and you've got the same zigzag on the other side, except it's offset by one bead. So now I've gone through the first bead on this side that is sticking up. Now I want to go through the next one on the other side. So not the one where my thread was originally coming out of, but the next one along. So I go through that bead there. Okay, and at this point, if you pull your thread tight, you'll notice that it'll start coming together. Okay, so you can fold it in half. Don't worry if it goes flat. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go through one bead that's sticking up on the top side, then the next bead that's sticking up on the bottom, then the next one on the top, and the next one on the bottom. And you're essentially going to zip it up uh, until you get all the way to the other side. So you're joining up the two ends of your little... Uh, tube, I suppose. Okay. And obviously for the longer ones, you would do exactly the same as this, except you would start with 20 beads instead of 12 beads. Or you could, if you wanted to, you could leave these off altogether and just have the circular pendant on its own. So you've got different options, options there. Okay, try not to get your... Um, stop a bead tangled in there so when you're finished you should come out on the side that doesn't have your tail thread on okay so you see I've zipped that together you can't actually tell where that join is because it kind of all zips together so at this point what I would do is I would take off my stopper bead and I would tie these two threads into a knot just to hold it all together then my tail thread is secured so I just need to weave it into a few beads and then I can cut it off, okay? And then at this point, I would put the same embellishment on the other side as that I had on the other side on this end, which I'm just going to show you the first one for the interest of time. So go down, pick up my five 50 nose, then go down the next bead along. doesn't matter which way around you go. Then come up the bead after that and so on and so on until you've gone all the way around. And then you can cut off your tail thread after you've gone through with it uh, through a few beads with it so don't do what I've just done and cut it right off at the knot I just wanted it out of the way right so when you've done your embellishment all the way around then what we need to do is we need to fill in the inside and add our two beads now I've got some jade here to go on the end and the reason for this embellishment on the end is if you see the tube that we did without that embellishment it's it's quite tight on the end so if you put your bead on top of there it just sits on top of there it's not very pretty Whereas on this side, these little picots that we did, they kind of open out a little bit. Yeah, they flare out a little bit. So you can put your bead in there and it's holding in there almost like a little lotus flower. Okay, so that's why we put those on the end there. Now, to fill in the inside, you're going to need some of your cheapy 6O beads. Okay, 
You only need a few of them, you don't need a whole lot. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your thread, after you've added all your little picots, you're going to go straight down the middle of your tube. Okay, so I'm not going through any beads, I'm just going down the middle of my tube, like that. Okay, then I'm going to pick up one of my 8mm, these are 8mm beads by the way, you could use bigger if you wanted to. Smaller might go too far into the tube, but you could always give it a go. And then you want to pick up a stopper bead, so in this case I'm just going to pick up a black. On the necklace I've used the little green ones, okay. You're going to pick up a little stopper bead, then you're going to go back through the 8mm jade, or whatever bead you're using. Then you're going to go through the centre of your tube again, okay, so not through any beads, just through the centre of the tube. So when you pull that tight, hold on to the little stopper bead, and that's going to pull your bead into those little embellishments that we put on the other end. Okay, now you're going to pick up some of your TP beads. Now, how many do you need to pick up of these? Well, there isn't really a set number because it depends on the size of your beads. But what you want is a length that is shorter than the peyote section. Okay, if you're not sure if it's shorter or longer, then just pick up less rather than more. Because if you pick up more, then it's going to hold your bead too far away from the end. So even if you only put three in there, it doesn't matter. You just need those in there so that it can't squish flat. So can you see those are much more rigid? So you want something on the inside to hold it and stop it from becoming flat. And then you push those beads inside your little tube. Okay? And then we're going to add the other 8mm. So you pick up your other 8mm bead. And you pick up another stopper bead. And you pull it down. You skip over your stopper bead, go through the 8mm. Okay? Now what you need to do is you want to go inside some of those cheapy beads in the middle, okay, and come out anywhere on the side of your little tube. Doesn't matter where you come out, just come out from any bead on the side, okay? Because that will allow you to pull this bead into position. Now, I haven't got my embellishments on this end, don't forget, you would have those. And just make sure that the whole lot pulls together really nicely. You've got both of those end beads nicely in position like that. Okay, so now your thread is coming out of the side of this little tube. So at this point, what I would do is I would go around a few beads just to secure this thread, because but don't cut it off because we will carry on with it. But you don't want to, in case this breaks when you're working on your next section or when you're wearing your necklace, you don't want the whole thing to come undone. So you want to th secure this thread, but then you can still carry on working on it. And then after that, the only thing that's left to do is to join the sections together, okay, and to do a little bail, but you can do whatever kind of bail that you like. So the way I've joined them together is I've got 12 delicate beads across the small section and 20 across the big section. So you want to work out where you want to put your joins. So what I've done with my joins is I've left um, four beads in the middle empty, okay, so work out from the end how, how far that is. So this is, I think, is the third or the fourth bead along from the end. So you want to be coming out of the fourth bead from the end, the delicate beads, not the embellishment beads, the fourth bead um, of your delicas, okay? And then all you're going to do is you're going to pick up two of your embellishment colour, so a green, or in this case I'm just going to pick up the black beads, two of those. Then you're going to take your next little section. Now you see I've left all my working threads on all of these sections because you can use those to join onto the next section. So when you so uh, you're coming out of your fourth bead along here on the 20 beads, uh, you're going to be in the one, two, three, four, five, in the eighth bead along from the delica on the end. Okay, so I'm not going to count it out now. I'm just kind of going to guess. And you're just going to go through the eighth delicate bead from the end. Now be careful here because it's quite stiff. You don't want to break your beads, so don't force it. Just jiggle it a little bit, okay? So there's your little join, and then you can go through those two beads again. Like that, and when you pull it tight, they join together. And then you want to go through that same bead that, you're, that you were coming out of on this section, but you want to go through it from the other side, not the side where your thread is coming out of. Okay, so that creates your little join in between. I just caught this thread in there, but that's how you join them all together. Okay, and then you would do the same thing on your pendant as well. Just add your two beads and join it to the bottom of the pendant. And then 
same on the other side again. And then all I've done here is I've made a little peyote sec section, which I started off from the beads that are in my peyote little section here. So you would go through a bead and then you would add a bead, go through an existing bead, add a bead. And then, uh, so you need to add three beads to start with and eventually you're going to have a six bead wide peyote section. I mean, I can show you a little bit quickly just how to get started with that on one of these. So just to make a bale, basically, if I thread my needle here quickly. So what you want, you want to use your delicas again for that. So you work out where your middle six beads are because that's where you're going to be making your bale. And you're coming out of one of those beads. You need to be coming out towards the center, obviously, because you're not going to be beading out towards the edge. You're going to be beading in towards the center. So I'm just going to turn around here. Okay, then you're going to pick up a delica bead and then you're going to skip over the bead that is basically you're skipping over one and you're going into the next one which is in line with the bead that you're coming out of. Okay, so you go through there. So this is how you're going to get your peyote started. After that, it's just straight peyote again. It's just how to get started. So can you see I've added one bead onto the edge there? And you're going to add on three of those if you want a six bead wide bale. So that's two. You're going to add the third one onto there. Okay. And then you're just going to turn around. And now you're going to use those three beads there as your starting point for your peyote section from there. Let me just move this out of the way because it's a bit confusing. So you're going to pick up your next delica bead and then you're going to go through that first one that is sticking up then another delica and then go through the next one that's sticking up and then pick up another delica and then the next one that's sticking up okay and then you turn around again and you just carry on like that until your bale is long enough um, to go around whatever you're going to hang your pendant on Okay, and then what all you're going to do to finish that off, okay, so you just keep going like that until, as I say, it's long enough to go around your necklace or whatever you're putting it onto, and then you're going to fold it over, and just like I have started it off here, you're going to attach it in the same way to a couple of rows over from where you started on the back, okay, and that's going to make your pendant like that. Okay. So that's your pendant finished. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, you're welcome to message me and ask me for any advice. Um, I hope I'm going to see a few of these uh, on the Wall of Fame or maybe on Facebook as well, finished, maybe in different colors as well. So don't forget to tune in tomorrow at 1.30 with Debbie Kershaw to open box number seven. I'm very tempted to have a look at what it is. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye.
Did you know that when you purchase with Jewelry Maker, you have a 30 day money back guarantee? Happy shopping with Jewelry Maker. Want to know what's going on in the next show? Then head over to our